In this video, we're going to go through the basics of how to convert your Onshape creation uh, into a 3D printed part. Now, when you're in Onshape, the parts that you create are on the main menu, and if you want to print them out, you need to export them as an STL file or a stereolithography file. So your first step is to export your part. You need to go to the tab at the bottom for your part and right click and then go to export. Now that will export by default as part studio one. So you're going to need to name it. it. Helps if you have something with your name on it, because that way we know who who's is who's when it comes out of the printer. And the format needs to stay exactly as it is on STL stereo lithography. All the other formats can stay the same, binary, millimeters, fine resolution, um, and so on. All of those are fine, and then we press OK. So like with anything on Google Drive or Google Chrome, when you export it, it's asking you to, to save the object. If you want to try and print anything from Google Drive, it's exactly the same thing. It will first of all save it. Um, so check where it's saving it to. Mine's saving it to my documents. Um, to a year 8 folder yours might be going into your downloads but just just check you know where it's going so you know where to retrieve it afterwards and we're looking for making sure it's an STL file and we know what name it is save now it will come in into the bottom left hand of the page you can click to open it and if you're in school the default program to open an STL file is flash print um, if you get any of these error messages, just read what they say first. It says that the model is off the platform. Do you want to put it on? Yes. Then it will often will say there's a new version available. Would you like to download it? Just say no, especially if you're in school because it won't let you. That's one way of doing it, but you could do this another way, which is to open up FlashPrint. You go Start, All Programs, Departmental Student Software, Design Technology, and in there is flash print so that's open flash print again same thing do you want to download a new version no and you can load up your STL file by going in and finding your STL file that you've just created like that now again we want it on the platform yes but what you'll notice here, at the moment it's coming, it's far too big. And it's showing that it's too big because it's off It's off the bed. It's too big to fit onto the bed. And it's showing it using these red colored edges on there. Now as it goes, to make this um, 3D print, so I'm going to make it very small anyway to go onto a key ring. So we do need to scale it down. Um, over on the left are the things that you can do. We're not going to look at some of the more advanced features like cutting and stuff like that. but we are going to scale it because we need to make it smaller. So go to scale and then click on your camera. Might need to go back to scale again. Now, we want it to be no bigger than 50 millimeters across. Now, across is always the X. Z is always the height. So in X, I'm going to type instead of 160, I'm going to make that 50. And there you can see it's scaled everything else. Now, you could change it so you, you're adjusting the height with the Z or the Y, it doesn't matter. Okay, so scale it to the right size. You can also use the percentage and <clears throat> we can close that. If you want to move it around, you can use the move button. And at this point, what you really want to do is to try and figure out which orientation is going to make the best quality design. And there's a few things to consider. Generally speaking, the, the base level the, the, first the first layer, which is represented with the blue, that's the bit that touches the platform, generally that will be the ugliest looking. Um, the, the prettier surfaces will be built up and the bottom one will be the ugliest one. So actually, for, a, for an object like this, having it this way around is quite sensible. However, it may be that you might need to rotate it. It may be that you decide that your object is better um, positioned on its back. And you can click through plus or minus 90 degrees that way to put the object on its back. If you don't have much detail on the back but you want to have lots of detail on the front 
Um, I have got some detail on here, not much, but there's some text up in the top corner there. So putting it on its back isn't going to be much use to me. So I'm going to put it back in that direction. But again, you can rotate it around using using these. Um, the other thing to think about when you're positioning it is you want to try and avoid overhangs. So whilst I've got some detail on the back which I want to show, um, it's also fair to point out that at the moment we've got an overhang which is the lens is, is, is essentially being built from thin air, there's nothing supporting it. Um, so that could cause me some problems not having any support. I could, again I could move it uh, onto its back so if it's sat like that then there's very little overhangs, there's a little bit of overhang here on the button um, but relatively it's not, it's not that much. But we've got a few tricks to, to try and sort that out. So I'm going to keep it as it is. Um, again, you may need to move it into the into the middle or move it if you want to print more than one object. But this is fine as it is. And <clears throat> what we're going to do now is position nicely. Is we're going to go to supports. Now there's different types of supports. You can have support options. You can have linear or tree-like. Personally, I prefer the linear ones. I think they they work a lot better. Um, I tend to make the pillar size slightly bigger though, two millimeters or something like that. And what that allows you to then do is to draw a support where you've got an overhang on your object. So all of these sorts of places are quite useful to position some some supports and again it might be useful to move it around to position those supports and that's so that when it's being built it's not creating them out of thin air it's building it up layer by layer but the the lens part is supported you could also put some inside the lens here what I like about the linear one, and also inside the viewfinder here, what I like about the linear ones is that they snap off quite easily. All right, so we've got a few supports inside there. Now I've done that manually. You can um, clear those and set your to be either linear or tree-like, and you can go auto supports. And just a couple of one one click and it will automatically create them but again what I don't like is it, it puts lots in that you don't want if you do need to get rid of any you can hit delete you can go in and individually select the ones that you want to get rid of like some of these are a bit pointless All right but actually yeah I don't like those ones uh, I'm going to keep mine on linear and just draw Draw them in. So flip it upside down and then just draw a few of these so that my lens gets supported and isn't being built. And thin air. Now, generally speaking, this, if it's a small object, this is going to be quite small. And because it's quite small, it doesn't really require too many supports. So I'm going to leave it at that. So save the supports, yes. Again, save, and that's your flash print file if you need to come back to it and make changes. And at this point, we are ready to print. And there's a few settings that are really important. It does lots of clever things, like you can pause it halfway through which is great if you want to embed magnets or bolts into something but for what we're doing we need to go into the more options bit um, if you have well before we go into more options if you've got supports like I've just drawn some supports on really important we need to make sure that the supports are enabled and if we have got supports then the raft also needs to be enabled so it builds a little platform um, which we can break off afterwards and it will also help to keep the supports fixed on. So generally if you've got supports make sure they are enabled and the raft is enabled. You've got your settings which you can change but most of the defaults are fine. 
go into the options and in here there's some really useful bits because we can set the infill to make it solid plastic obviously the more plastic used and the, the more densely the fill the longer it takes and the more material it uses so generally anything small we tend to set it at zero percent so it's completely hollow the only trouble with making it hollow that will speed up the print but it means that the it can be quite weak so you sometimes need to increase the size of the shells and generally speaking if you double these um, then that should that should be perfectly fine so perimeter shells is set at two if we make that four and the top layer is six and the bottom layer is six uh, all the rest of the options are fine so it's just the infill we've changed to zero so it's not wasting any on the inside and the shells we've had to double up to make the actual the actual object a bit thicker a bit more tough and then it asks us to save the file that will save as GX and it's the GX file which which goes to the printer okay so now it's thinking about it so this is a preview and if you're using one of the printers uh, one of the computers next to the printers the last three that is attached to a printer you can hit print and your job will begin just make sure that the bed is clear um, if not you can leave it as it is save your GX file onto a USB stick and plug a USB stick into the printer and again that that should print out something like this would typically if it's hollow um, would typically take about 45 minutes half an hour um, so you can set it to print come back and then next lesson or break time or lunch time it'll be ready okay any questions speak to your teachers but those are the basic uh, principles of 3d printing using flash print